Hey guys, how you going? I hope you're doing really well and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be taking you through some of the calisthenics equipment that's really beneficial to have at home if you're looking to incorporate some more bodyweight training or calisthenics training in your routine. And I'm also going to be taking you through some of the ways that you can use that equipment, especially as a beginner. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then we will get straight on into the video. Just in case you haven't seen one of my videos before, I'll just give you a super brief background on me. So my name is Lucy and several years ago I lost a significant amount of weight through HIIT training and some running as well as being in a calorie deficit. After a couple of years I found my love for this style of training which is calisthenics and bodyweight training and it all came from just setting myself a new year's resolution to be able to do a chin up. And from that point onwards, I st stumbled down the rabbit hole of calisthenics and I have never left. It's become a huge passion of mine and I now have the amazing job of getting women and beginners especially involved in calisthenics. So calisthenics, right? What the heck is calisthenics? I remember for the first six months, I couldn't even pronounce calisthenics. I was like calisthenics, calisthenics. I have no idea, but basically it's derived from a Greek phrase which means beautiful strength. And that totally makes sense if you Google calisthenics or street workout and you find some of the gravity defying exercises that you see on there. Things like planches, uh, human flags, back levers, front levers and bar skills, things like that. But calisthenics as a general is referring to body weight training. So really using your body as the resistance and learning how to move and feel your body in space and grow strong through just training with your body alone. Calisthenics is a fantastic form of training because it uses really big muscle groups or what we call compound movements as the basis and really incorporates full body movements. It's quite hard in calisthenics to isolate just one or two muscles. A lot of the movements really require full body control, which is super beneficial, especially for beginners. If you do train calisthenics, it really works on so many different areas. So not only are you building strength, but you, you build endurance, flexibility, and proprioception. So knowing where your body is in space and that body control that is gonna be so useful in just general day-to-day -day life. I could bore you to tears with my love of calisthenics and why I think it's such a fantastic form of training, but I won't. I might say that for another video, but in the meantime, if you are interested in some of the other benefits and some of the science behind it, you can head over to a blog post that I wrote a little while ago. I will link it down below, and that will just give you a little bit more information about what calisthenics is and how people do it. All right, so I said that calisthenics requires no equipment, but this video is all about equipment that might help with calisthenics. So what's up with that? Basically, there is certain pieces of equipment that are gonna be beneficial for you to have so you can maximize your calisthenics training. Also, with body weight training, you will get to a point if your goal is to increase strength, there will be a point where your body weight is just not enough anymore. You'll get strong enough to master your body weight and you'll need to add something else externally to make those exercises harder. Now there is things within calisthenics that we can do to make the exercises harder, but generally people would move to free weights and start with adding resistance that way. Now don't get me wrong, if you are just starting out in calisthenics, you really want to be able to master the fundamental exercises. So there's really five that we're talking about in calisthenics. That is push-ups, pull-ups, dips, squats and hip hinges or an L-sit movement. So while it's really important to be working on these five skills and learning the basics and really mastering them so you can build upon them to get to some of those really cool skills that we see on Google or on YouTube, it's also important with calisthenics to have fun. And that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love this form of training because it is just so fun. Don't get me wrong, you won't see progress as quickly as you might with other forms of training, things like HIIT or with free weights, that sort of thing. But when you do see progress, it is so worthwhile. And personally, it's the main form of training that I have just absolutely fallen in love with and I'm so, so passionate about. And I have rarely found somebody who tries it, who doesn't like it or doesn't see a benefit to it. As a beginner in calisthenics, I slowly built up my collection of equipment. So I started with smaller things that were not very expensive, like resistance bands, some light dumbbells, and a door mounted pull-up bar. And I've worked my way up to some more expensive investments, such as parallettes and gymnastic rings. And don't worry, we're gonna be talking about this later and how it can maybe benefit a beginner or intermediate. 
So that's the beauty of calisthenics. If you want to go and grab these things, then you can, and you'll be able to use them in any form of training as well as calisthenics. If you don't, then you totally don't have to, and there'll be so many exercises that you can still do. All right, so with that being said, we're gonna move on to the first piece of equipment that I recommend for calisthenics and home training, and that is going to be resistance bands. Alright, so resistance bands. They are one of the first things that I bought, and to be honest with you, I think I already had a few lying around my house. I think most people have these, um, but any resistance bands will do. There's no brand that's particularly better than another one. Um, they're all pretty good. I think I bought mine in, K in Kmart in Australia, most of them anyway, or maybe Rebel. Um, but Honestly, Amazon, I'll link some below, but Amazon sell perfectly good ones, or there's loads of brands that sell them. So um, you can pick up any that you like. Now, resistance bands are useful to make exercises both harder and easier. So having a variety of different sizes is gonna be really helpful. So as you can see, this is just a couple of the ones I have. This one is the thinnest and thickest, and then I've got like a medium resistance one. Now, I don't know the exact resistances that these give you, but essentially, I would use the smaller ones for either making an exercise that I'm already good enough at with body weight harder, or I will use it when I'm training for pull-ups or muscle-ups, something like that. When I'm just starting out with an exercise, I go for a thicker band if I'm looking for assistance. So for example, with pull-ups, this one, this one, if you loop this around your foot, attach it to the bar, or if you loop it around your knee, it's gonna help you a lot more than a thinner band is when you're trying to get to the top of the bar. So when you're a beginner and you're looking for assistance with exercises, you're gonna want a thicker band. As you progress, you're gonna get thinner and thinner until you can just do it with your body weight. The opposite goes if you want to make exercises harder. So for example, if you want to put this around your shoulders when you're doing push-ups, you're gonna start, if you can already do body weight push-ups, start with a thin band, then you're gonna slowly increase to a thick band. I mean, if you could do it with this band, that's crazy, crazy strong. I don't, I don't know who can do that, but anyway, resistance bands. So these are the long looped ones that all attach, just one big circle. You'll see loads of different types of resistance bands, but honestly, these ones are gonna be super versatile. They're dead cheap to buy and they last. I mean, I've had these probably for the best part of three years or something like that. They last forever, so definitely a worthwhile investment. All right, second we're gonna talk about dumbbells. Now, I have a few, again, these ones are just light, and you don't need these necessarily for calisthenics, but sometimes they can just be useful for two reasons. One, obviously, to make exercises harder. So, for example, if you are working with squats and bodyweight squats feel good, then you can add some weight, either whether holding it at your chest, holding it up in the air, that sort of thing, um, just to add that little bit of extra resistance. For core exercises, I find them very, very useful as well. Core is a super, super important part of calisthenics. You need to have a strong controlled core, back and front, and having the ability to add a little bit of additional weight is going to be really beneficial rather than just resistance coming from bands. Another really good use of dumbbells is for things like rehab, strengthening joints, and warming up and stretching at the end. So for example, with calisthenics, especially when you're a beginner, you'll find that the strain on your joints is quite noticeable and you can get quite painful joints. So it's really important not only to be stretching and looking after them, but also doing some strengthening exercises. So if you have a light enough dumbbell, for example, you can do wrist strengthening exercises, which are gonna be really beneficial in the long-term aspect of your training and also just for long-term joint health. Right, I feel like this one's a bit of a no-brainer and I would guarantee that 90% of people watching this video would already have one of these, but a yoga mat of some sort is really, really helpful. So I think we all know what we use these for. If you're lying on the floor, it just puts a little bit of protection between you and whatever surface you're sitting on. But some other benefits that I have personally found in calisthenics, you can fold it up and use it as protection if you're just training things that you might potentially fall on the floor. So things like handstands, headstands, that sort of stuff. And also it's grippy. So if you get a good quality one, if you're doing handstands on a surface that's a little bit slippy, for example, laminate flooring, it can be quite nice to have this. It just gives you that little bit of extra grit. And personally, I find the fact that it's slightly soft and squishy beneficial for when I'm doing my handstands, that I can actually 
use my fingers and feel the ground a little bit more than when I'm doing it on carpet or if I'm doing it on just plain laminate. So that's some extra benefits from the yoga mats. Now I would recommend, again, investing in a good quality one. You can get super, super cheap ones, but once you've used a better quality one, you'll notice the difference quite a lot. So I don't, mine was like $30 from Australia. It's by a company called PowerTube Pro, I think. Um, the Yoga Mat by PowerTube Pro. I will link it down below if they still sell it. But um, Lululemon do some really good ones. Aloe a Yoga do some really good ones as well. But I definitely think it's a good investment and something that will last you through all your training. And not only that, you can use it for so many things. You can use it for yoga, for stretching, for just core work in general. So definitely a good investment to make. Moving on to probably one of the best pieces of equipment that has really helped me in my journey in calisthenics and something that I would recommend when you're a beginner. So, this is a door-mounted pull-up bar. They come in all different shapes and sizes. The main thing I would suggest is getting one that is going to fit your door frame. Very, very important. So just make sure you check the measurements before you purchase one and also one that's not going to fall down too much. Now these aren't fixed to the wall, they literally, this one for example, it just sits on the door frame by balancing and using counter pressure here. Um, so as long as you're aware of that when you're doing the exercises, that's all that matters because you can put your weight in certain places so you know what's going on and you're not going to be doing anything, especially as a beginner, anything too crazy on these, so that should be totally fine. But as long as it has enough space that it fits your door frame and that it's stable enough, then that's all you need. Now this one I think cost me 20 pounds. I got it from Argos. Again, I will try and link it below if I can find it. If not, Amazon have tons and tons of different ones and they're all just as good as each other. So, I mean, 20 pounds is a really small investment, in my opinion, for something that you can get so much use out of. And I mean, I'll show you in another clip, but I just hook it on my door and honestly, this is how I started my pull-ups. I never did sets and reps or proper training or anything like that, just like with all my calisthenics. I hung it on the door and every time I walked past the door, I tried to pull myself up on the bar. And eventually, after months and months and months of trying, I, I could do it. Definitely a worthwhile investment if you're looking to build up grip strength, scapular strength, or any pulling movements such as chin-ups or pull-ups. So as you can see, I recently purchased a squat rack which has a pull-up bar attached to it and I've put it in my garden and honestly it's been such a good investment. It's something that I've wanted for years now and since the self-isolation has happened in the UK, I just thought it was a good time to really commit to it and go and grab one. So it's been fantastic. It means I can start training things like my L-sits a little bit more, my pull-ups, um, even working on basic moves like this, like scapular shrugs and passive hanging. Um, but yeah, also means I have somewhere to hang my rings on, which is fantastic. And honestly, I'm so glad that I purchased it. As with everything else, I will pop a link down below to where I purchased it from. But it came super, super quick and was really easy to assemble and is nice and light as well. So you can put it anywhere, really, even inside your house. I'm sure there would be room for it. So yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. Alright, so we're going to start moving on to some equipment that would be more of a long-term investment if you're looking to up your skills or there's some extra added benefits that we'll talk about as well. And we're going to start with gymnastics rings. Now you would have seen these cropping up in gyms all over the world in the last couple of years and you also see them used quite a lot in CrossFit. Um, but traditionally you probably saw these in the Olympics, which can be majorly off-putting if you're a beginner thinking, you don't need rings, they're not gonna be beneficial, that's a super high level of calisthenics or gymnastics, I can't compete with that. Um, I get where you're coming from, but there is definitely some huge benefits to having rings if you're able to purchase them. So firstly, we'll chat about what they are and where you can get them. So my ones, I'm gonna ding them as quietly as possible. Mine are metal, they're really heavy and they make a lot of noise when they bang together and quite cumbersome to carry around. So these ones are metal, but you can also buy them in plastic and in wood as well. 
Plastic tends to be the cheapest option, with wood being the intermediate option and then metal being the most expensive option. Honestly, I prefer wood. I think it feels a lot nicer on your hand. You can get quite a good grip on it as well. And something about these is that in the sun, I used to live in Australia, and these would sit out in the sun while I was training, and I wouldn't be able to touch them because they would be so hot in summer. So we don't have that problem with wood. So if I was to suggest something personally from experience, I would say wood, but really it's just personal preference. If you're just looking for a set of rings to try out to see if you're going to be using them enough to invest in them, then just grab yourself some plastic ones. They sell them on Amazon or eBay. The only thing I would suggest is making sure that you read the reviews to make sure they're safe. So the reason for that is these rings get hung up using straps and the straps have clips like this. And when you think about the fact that you're balancing your entire body weight just on this one contraption, you want to be mindful that it's gonna hold your body weight safely. So you want to think about the fact this is not gonna give way, and not gonna break. So that's really important. So definitely check that you read the reviews to make sure that it's definitely gonna be up to the job. Mine are from Rogue Fitness, so quite a reputable brand. Again, I will link them down below, and I've had them for probably about a year and a half. Now, rings are a bit of an odd one, because however beneficial they are, like I say, they're quite cumbersome to carry around, and also, you need somewhere to hang them. So you can potentially hang them from your door pull-up bar, but it is very risky, and personally, as a beginner, I would suggest you don't do that just in case you fall. You don't want to be causing yourself any injuries or putting yourself in any compromising positions where you might hurt yourself. So when you do attach rings, you really want to have somewhere safe to attach them to. Some gyms will let you take your own rings into them and hang them up on the rigs, but honestly, again, it's hit and miss in some way. So really, you're relying on finding somewhere safe in your home if you have the space. So something like a beam in the ceiling that you can will hold your weight, but I don't have anything like that in my home. Um, so the only option I have really is taking it to a park and hanging it. So I would hang it on something like a football post, or if there's any pull-up bars in the park, then I would happily hang it on there and use it. Which also means that you're limited in how often you can use your rings, or how much effort is going to require to go and hang your rings up. That being said, if you want to start learning some new skills, such as skin the cats, back levers and muscle ups as you start to advance with your training, the rings can actually be a little bit easier to learn on than a bar. And the reason for that is you've got the motion and the movement that you don't have on a bar. So it requires a little bit less mobility and flexibility. So when I started out, I personally used my rings for things like skin the cats and single leg back levers. I slowly started introducing some muscle ups and some archer pull ups, which is when you go to the side and the other side. Things that I can't do on a bar, but I found that I could do on a ring. So when I was introducing it, I mentioned that there were some other benefits of rings, and really I'm just talking about the mobility and flexibility issues between a bar and rings. Like I said, the rings give you that freedom of movement that you just don't get with a bar. So if you are struggling with mobility issues, or you have joints that are maybe a little bit fragile, then you might find rings actually really beneficial and help you get through some of your skills in calisthenics. Not only that, but they're also fun, and you can actually take them off and use them just like this to just do some fun things. Like I try and do push-ups on them, and it just adds an extra level of difficulty to your exercises, because not only are you pushing further when you come into that push-up, but you have to balance on this tiny bit of surface area rather than your whole hand. So it just adds a bit of complexity and is a bit of fun when you're training with friends to challenge each other. All right guys, we have made it to the last piece of equipment that I would recommend for calisthenics. And this was probably the last thing that I purchased well, I didn't actually buy these, I made these, but this is the last thing that I really got on my calisthenics journey. Um, so, parallettes are basically handles. You can get high ones, parallel bars, and then mini ones like this. So these ones sit low to the floor, and there's a variety of different uses, but honestly, I personally just use them for a couple of different things, although there is tons of things you can use them for. One huge benefit of parallettes for beginners is that it puts your wrist in a different position. For example, if you are doing push-ups and you find that you get wrist pain when you have wrist flexion, 
then these can be a really good solution. So when you put your hand on them, it puts your wrist stacked above your hand rather than putting you into wrist extension, which means that you're in a much more natural position with your hand and therefore you should experience a little bit less wrist pain as you strengthen your wrists up. So that's one huge benefit. I also use these for handstands. Not only, again, do they help wrists in handstands, but they also challenge me personally because to get up onto these parallettes into a handstand, I have to use my core a lot more, which is challenging for me because I have gotten so used to the way that I handstand. As soon as I add these into the equation, I suddenly have to work a lot harder because I'm not used to it. So something else which is a fundamental calisthenic skill which you can use these for and are regularly used for is an L-sit or a hip hinge. Now this is something that I'm still working on and quite frankly, it's one of my weaknesses. I don't like training it. I avoid it at all costs and I'm actually making a video on this at the moment, training my weaknesses, but it's really, really important and beneficial. So I would much rather do a hanging leg raise rather than a seated one, but this is super important, and when I do do them on here, I realize why I should be doing them on here. Right, in terms of where you can get them, there's loads of really good brands that sell them. So you've got Gravity Fitness, Raz Fitness, um, there's a couple of different websites that sell calisthenics gear where you can grab parallettes. But honestly, again, hit up Amazon, they sell just as good ones. As long as it's sturdy, and it's gonna keep you supported, and it's not gonna break, that's all that matters. It really doesn't matter on the, the everything else is just personal preference. So for example, these ones are quite industrial looking and I made them myself. It didn't make them any cheaper to buy. So I literally made these out of plumbing equipment. I literally went into the hardware store. I knew that they sold these little bits and bobs. So I just went in, I bought all the little pieces and screwed them all together and they work perfectly fine for me. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and it's given you a little bit more information about what calisthenics is and why something that involves no equipment has so much equipment and how it might be useful to you. If you guys need any extra information, please feel free to message me, leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you. Or you can head over to my Instagram account and send me a message over there. I always love hearing from you guys. Otherwise, I will leave you to it. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.